Welcome back to the Jericho Experiment. I hope that you're all enjoying listening to our shows. Um, this is Jericho Walls, and I'm here again with my buddy Chet O'Dell, and we have another great show in store for you. Uh, we're here talking about Cobra Kai Season 1, Episode 4. Uh, the first three episodes, they've been awesome, and we're expecting them to get even better. Hey, what's up, dude? What's up, man? Uh, this has been a lot of fun. Um, we've we've been away for a while, uh, it seems, right? Uh, but, you know, we've been really busy. Uh, we've got a lot of stuff going on. A lot of new projects, a lot of new um, experiments, uh, you know, so we're excited to to start getting more and more um, information out. Um, but here we are. We're back with uh, Cobra Kai. So episode three uh, leaves us at the Halloween dance. And you and I were really excited about this dance. Yeah. Um, you know, th- this, this was a huge moment in the movie. And uh, we, we both just knew something big was going to happen at this dance as well. Um, and Cobra Kai doesn't disappoint. No, they didn't. Well, do you agree that the show uh, had a lot more going on at the dance than the movie did? It really did. It was kind of crazy. Um, you know, Daniel has, has really put a strain on his uh, relationship with uh, Sam, you know, the way he embarrassed her at the dance. Uh, we see Aisha, you know, she's she's getting bullied a lot by um, it's actually Samantha's friends. And, um, you know, even though Miguel, he's, he's showing these great strides in training, you know, he's really starting to, uh, find his own way in this. Um, he's obviously not ready to take on Kyler and his buddies yet. That's for sure. Uh, they really handed him an ass beating and with a lacrosse stick at that. I know it was terrible. It was so bad. Um, while we don't know what happened after episode three leaves us with Johnny finding Miguel laying on the bathroom floor. Um, something interesting happened. Johnny spotted a picture of Allie in the trophy case and it appears that there's, uh, you know, still some strong feelings there. Maybe Johnny feels there's some, uh, unfinished business with his high school sweetheart. Yeah, maybe so. Um, so you said uh, Johnny, you know, finds Miguel beaten up and uh, left on the floor. What happens next? Well, we don't know just yet. Um, let's jump into episode four and let's see what we find out. Um, so this episode starts off in an, an electronics store. And who do we see working there? Well, we, we haven't really met this kid yet, um, but we all know this is Johnny's kid, Robbie. Um, that is Robbie, right? Yeah. Um, you know, not what you expect from, uh, Johnny's kid, uh, definitely. Um, he's talking to a customer and he's using all kinds of, uh, technical terms about his broken laptop and, and he seems quite confident that he can fix it. Um, so this Robbie kid is, uh, he's pretty smart. Um, he's definitely further advanced with technology than his dad. Yeah. Johnny isn't very tech savvy and, uh, Robbie seems to know his stuff, uh, and seems to be pretty good at his job. Uh, he's really uh, schmoozing it up <laughs> with the customer. Yeah, he is. Uh, he's very personable and uh, talkative. Yeah, he's, he's pretty good at it. You he know, is. you can tell. But the customer calls him uh, Eduardo. Eduardo? Who the heck is that? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Does Robbie have a twin brother? Does uh, Johnny have two sons? Well, that would that would be another curveball thrown at us, right? <laughs> um, well, <laughs> we do find out pretty quickly this uh, this isn't the case. Uh, this is not Eduardo. Eduardo is uh, the kid standing outside without a shirt on. Um, this is definitely Robbie um, and his two buddies. And uh, Robbie's, he's quite the hustler, you know. Um, he definitely doesn't work at the electronics store. They just, uh, they stole that guy's laptop. <laughs> yeah, and he already has three people bit in a bidding war for it. And his buddy's telling him, um, you know, a way to get all three to pay for it. These aren't good kids. Uh, it's pretty obvious um, this isn't their first rodeo. Yeah, definitely. And um, as they're taking off, you know, Robbie sees something on the ground and uh, he picks it up and it's one of uh, Johnny's Cobra Kai flyers, you know, immediately recognizes him, you know, and uh, he picks it up. And, you know, when his friend says, you know, hey, man, you looking to take karate lessons? He's like, no, it's it's my effing dad You know, <laughs> throws it down. And uh, so Rob, Robbie definitely knows his dad. He definitely knows Johnny. Um, whether Johnny has been very involved in his life or not, you know, we, we still really don't know that whole story. Um, Robbie seems to be holding a lot of resentment toward, towards his dad. Um, you know, he's certainly, uh, not putting off positive vibes when he sees his dad's picture. Um, but I have a feeling, you know, that we're going to learn a little, little bit more about this story, um, and Robbie, you know, in this episode. Dude, I just love it when the Cobra Kai logo comes up on the screen and that intro music they play. It's always fucking cool. It's, it's always so badass, isn't it? <laughs> it is. Uh, so 
Now we see uh, what happened after the dance. Uh, Johnny has to carry Miguel home. Miguel is in pretty bad shape. You know, Kyler really did a number on him. But luckily, Johnny lives in an apartment right next to Miguel. So at least it was on his way home. <laughs> <laughs> and Miguel's mom is furious. She tells Johnny to stay the hell away from her son. Um, she doesn't, uh, you know, ever want to see him again, obviously. And um, we can see Johnny is beaten up over it. He's He wasn't prepared for this. Yeah. This kid has been working really hard for Johnny and uh, he's been improving like crazy. You know, Johnny is really developing a bond with Miguel um, almost, you know, maybe like uh, Johnny is finding some sense of peace training Miguel. Uh, we know Johnny has a son, um, but his own son doesn't want anything to do with him. And now he has this kid, Miguel, who, who actually believes in him. He listens to him. You know, he does what Johnny tells him to do. And, and Johnny and Miguel both see the Cobra Kai training works. Um, maybe Johnny realizes that Miguel is starting to look at him as, you know, kind of a father figure. And, um, you know, cause he doesn't have a dad, you know, wouldn't that be pretty interesting? Yeah. Yeah. Um, we know that Daniel didn't uh, have a father in his life and he really looked at Mr. Miyagi like a father figure. And we know that Johnny, you know, had a real asshole for a stepdad. Uh, so maybe he looked at Sensei Chris as a father figure. Man, there's a lot going on with this karate in in the valley. Yeah, in the valley, it's big. <laughs> um, but we can see that uh, Johnny is really hurt over over this incident. He leaves Miguel in his apartment, and and we hear Miguel scream. You know, Cobra Kai never dies. You know, <laughs> you know, it, it kind of you know pulls at your heartstrings a little bit. Yeah, it did. Uh, you know, then Johnny goes home and he goes to bed. Not definitely <laughs> not Johnny. <laughs> definitely not Johnny. <laughs> He's out walking around, well, more like stumbling around. He's drunk again. Johnny's had another setback. Um, his only student just got the royal crap kicked out of him, and now he isn't allowed to be his student anymore. Uh, Johnny feels like he's failed. He's failed Miguel, and he's failed himself. He, he was just climbing out of the hole, man. Uh, he's been living, you know, in the hole he's been living in, and into the light just to be dragged back down. Yeah, Johnny's in a terrible place. Uh, he's really drunk. Um, he's really using alcohol to, you know, to try to mask his pain, but, but this is never the answer. You know, as a matter of fact, this is really how, you know, you make things worse. Um, we all have problems and using something to, you know, mask the pain just, it's not the right choice. We have to face it head on, you know, dive, dive right into that fire and, and fight, man. You know, you know, because, you know, while he's in this drunken state, he's, you know, there's a really good chance he's going to make even more bad decisions. That's for sure. And I think Johnny is about to do just that. Uh, he spots a, a LaRusso automotive billboard with Daniel's <laughs> face on it. I love this part. <laughs> My God. Daniel looks like he's on top of the world. He has everything to smile about. And that's what, you know, what Johnny sees. And he says, you know, what are you smiling at? Yeah, he's, like, he's talking what? to the yeah, billboard. Yeah, he's talking to the billboard. What the fuck are you smiling I hate at? You. Yeah. <laughs> Johnny is pissed. He's hurt, and now he's not in his right mind. He sees a guy painted, you know, he sees a guy painting some graffiti, and he asks him, do you want to trade cans? <laughs> <laughs> he's giving up his yeah, beer. Yeah, he's giving up the beer right? for a can of spray paint. <laughs> now, we don't know what he's up to, but we just watched him trade his beer for some red spray paint. So, yeah. you know. It's probably not a good combination, right? Right, right. Um, <laughs> maybe he's going to paint Daniel sucks or, you know, Daniel is a pussy on the wall. <laughs> maybe. But whatever he has planned, I think uh, we're about to find out what it is like really soon. Yeah. Yeah. We keep saying that um, we need to face our problems head on. But, you know, is that what this is? You know? I think drinking your problems away is uh, really more like running from them instead of facing them. I agree. It's a tough spot to be in, and it may seem like the best thing to do at the time or maybe the easiest thing to do, but we aren't here to take the easy way out. We've already said it. Creating a new life of happiness isn't going to be easy. It's going to be really tough, and turning to addiction will never help us get out of anything. It'll never help us get out of the hole. It's only going to make it even harder to get out. Yeah. Um, so now we see Daniel at home making breakfast for his kids. You know, he's always so happy. You know, he's 
but he's he, this time he really it seems like he's trying to make amends with with Sam. Um, he knows she is really upset with him, you know, for following her around at the dance and embarrassing her. And um, let me go ahead and tell you, man, you know, when we were having, you know, little sock hops, you know, when we were kids, yeah. my mom always chaperoned those things. Oh, and I know. She, yeah. She watched me like a hawk. She it was, watched me too. It was so embarrassing. I hated it. <laughs> you know, so I know how, how Sam feels. Um, you know, I didn't get to express my anger the way she does in the show, but, you know, that's, that's what I was, that's how I felt at the time. Uh, <laughs> Uh, but Daniel, you know, he's going to try to fix it with some banana ram of pancakes. And I never, mm. I was never even offered that. So there you go. Yeah. Um, but you know, Sam's not responding to him, you know, and, uh, his son is, uh, he's just helping himself to the pancakes. <laughs> <laughs> he called it a pancake taco. <laughs> you know, the, just on a side note that his son doesn't fit the family uh, he's he's crazy isn't he 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 does i mean he's kind of a little punk he is he's a little, that's what i'm getting at he's a little punk he he is i mean if you look at the family they're all all physical and he's just sitting there playing video games yeah yeah that's all he does and yeah. eating these pancakes yeah. <laughs> and complaining yeah, <laughs> and yeah. ordering stuff off of amazon it makes sense <laughs> yeah <laughs> Yeah, that kid is a mess. And uh, and Sam runs out without even speaking to him. So Daniel knows that he's really messed up. Or at least he thinks he has. Um, Remember, Daniel has a bad feeling about Sam's boyfriend. But he doesn't, you know, really know that his feelings are correct yet. Um, He actually thinks that he had it all wrong. Yeah, um, but I don't think Daniel has hit rock bottom yet. And, And maybe he won't allow that to happen, you know. He's... He's certainly not as low as Johnny right now. No, but um, he's certainly paranoid. He's definitely paranoid, you know, and he's, he's losing it, right? You know, um, yeah. you know, we can see it. We can see that he's feeling it. He's, he's feeling, you know, um, dejected. He's always, he always has that look about him now. He's lost, you know, and before he was driving to work, you know, singing and snapping his mm-hmm. fingers and happy. And, and now he's driving to work looking miserable. You know, it's just, it's not the normal Daniel that we've seen in the show. Mm-hmm. Um, He's just driving, you know, no music on, you know, just lost in his own thoughts. And, you know, I know how that feels, you know, I've, that, that's been me, you know, a, a lot of my life, you know, just, just feeling kind of lost, you know, driving. And sometimes I don't even remember how I got there, you know, because I was in my head so much. Mm-hmm. And sometimes, you know, this is where we can really start to find our way. Um, yeah, it's nice and helpful to have someone to talk, you talk with about our problems, but uh, sometimes it's just uh, good to be alone. To have time to reflect. Uh, sometimes if we are completely honest with ourselves, this is where we can really start to examine our problems and to, you know, start to find a way to correct them. Yeah, I, I agree with that. And uh, now Daniel's uh, phone is ringing, you know, so much for the alone time. And it's his wife, Amanda. And uh, she wants to, pre- to prepare him uh, for the billboard, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and just then, you know, Daniel sees the billboard of his uh, auto sales rival, Tom Cole, Cole on Van Nuys, you know, and the, the billboard is, it's huge. Right. And um, Tom, Cole, you know, Tom Cole is obviously trying to compensate for something. Right. You know, that's what Daniel says, you know, <laughs> and then Amanda, you know, you see on her face like, oh boy, you know, not that billboard. Wait till you get a look at your new billboard. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Uh, that's right, Daniel. Um, someone has taken the liberty of painting a giant dick <laughs> on your face. <laughs> Literally. Someone painted a giant red dick on Daniel's <laughs> face on the billboard. And I think we have a good idea who was responsible. <laughs> Yes, we do. Um, but Daniel, he certainly doesn't know. You know, he's even got the police at his dealership just begging them to go round up the scum that did this. You know, he's he is taking this so personally, you know. Um, but Amanda, you know, she's going to try to smooth over the situation again. She's really, really good at that. And uh, in this situation, she's she's even humorous about it. Yeah, unfortunately, Daniel wasn't having it. He's furious. <laughs> he even I would be it. too, though. I've got a dick in my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> That's fucked up. <laughs> and you'll blow the competition away. 
<laughs> she even tells him, you know, no one's going to see it. Everybody's going to see it, though. Yeah, you know? it's huge. But she's like, you know, no one's going to see it. And even if they do, no one's going to recognize you. It's the Dick's billboard now. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, God. Uh <laughs> And then we hear Louie in the background. Did you guys see the billboard? That thing's hilarious. Uh, so Daniel has had enough. This isn't his day at all. Uh, someone painted a giant dick on his face for everyone to see. It just sucks, doesn't it? <laughs> it does suck. <laughs> Daniel is already falling apart. You know, it's easy to see that. Uh, but now this, you know, what in the world is going on? Uh, just a short while ago, his life seemed perfect. You know, but ever since running into Johnny Lawrence, everything has been turning into a negative direction for him. Um, do you think that a person could really have that strong of an effect on another person? Absolutely. I know they can. Uh, it is so true that people can have a, a strong impact on us, both negatively and positively. Um, the key is not allowing them to unbalance your life. The big problem is that uh, it's more than Johnny that is affecting Daniel's balance. Ever since Daniel spotted the Cobra Kai Dojo, uh, he hasn't been able to stop reliving the past. All those bad moments from high school. You know, if Daniel wants to restore his balance, he's going to have to take a look inside and take control of his own life instead of letting, uh, letting any negativity from other sources infect him. You know, it, it is funny that you brought that up. Um, it, it really is, you know, up to Daniel. Um, but, but isn't it funny how one source of negativity entered his life and now it seems like he's, uh, he's completely surrounded by it. Um, I think if he were just to, uh, you know, allow them to do their own thing, you know, be negative on their own, you know, just, just stop worrying about them. You know, he would, he would just be in such a much better place. Yeah. He obviously did well when he removed Johnny from his life. So why would he now allow Johnny's presence to affect him? Well, now we see Miguel with his mom in their apartment. And Miguel is really beaten up. Um, and you know, his mom, she never wanted him to have any part of karate to begin with. It was always no karate, you know, and, and now she has all the ammunition she needs to fight with him. You know, he got the crap kicked out of him. He's hurt, you know, and it's, it's all Sensei Johnny and karate's fault. We even hear her say that uh, he needs to tell her who did this so she can call the school. You know, they can protect you, Miguel, but. Miguel isn't having it. Um, they can't protect him. It would only make it so much worse. And we just talked about this. He knows the ramifications of telling. More beatings will come. They will come. Um, but Miguel, he realizes that, you know, he just needs more training. Um, I do not think this kid is scared. You know, I don't think he's scared of those bullies. I think he wants to fight them. You know, he, he gained a good bit of confidence, you know. He's getting stronger, you know, he's feeling it, you know, he wants to keep training so that he can handle, you know, himself. Mm -hmm. Um, and I love how, you know, his, his yaya, you know, his grandma, she has his back. Uh, it was so funny when, uh, you know, she was kind of arguing with his mom and, you know, she's throwing up her fists, you know, he just needs, he needs to learn to keep his hands up. He needs more training. That was good. Yaya understands him. Um, she realizes that he's found something that he likes and he just needs, you know, to keep at it. Uh, this is important for us all to realize. Um, we've talked about the hurdles and setbacks we all face. You know, what do you think? Is it just a hurdle or is it a set or is this a setback? Well, this situation's a little tough. You know, I mean, Miguel is just a kid. So if his, his mama says no, well, that, that means no, you know, um, but Miguel, he just doesn't seem like the type to give up easily, you know? I mean, he really believes in himself now. He really, really believes in uh, Sensei Johnny Lawrence, you know? Mm -hmm. He got really upset when his mom called uh, Johnny a loser. <laughs> you know, he's not a loser, Mom. If you knew him, you know, you would see that he's a great man. <laughs> perspective, man. Yeah, it's definitely perspective. <laughs> and then we see that uh, good man. <laughs> lying on the floor or maybe passed out on the floor. He looks passed out. I think, yeah. <laughs> Johnny has just had, uh, you know, a night of hardcore drinking and painting dicks on people's faces. <laughs> he is wasted and his phone is ringing. And I, I can't believe he was able to answer it. Yeah, there's cans of beer lying all over the floor. Uh, one of them is leaking out on the carpet. It's not a pretty scene. So the phone call is from the vice principal of uh, Robbie's school. 
Um, now I'm not sure about the whole father son dynamics between Johnny and Robbie, but, uh, we find out that Johnny and his son are on a big canoeing trip on the mighty Colorado river. Yeah, right. Johnny isn't on any trip. So as the vice principal is going on and on about how wonderful this trip must be, um, she lets him know that if Robbie isn't back at school, he's being held back. Uh, Johnny isn't sure what's going on, but he knows, uh, it's all bullshit. Yeah. This little con artist, son of his. <laughs> so as Johnny is walking out of his apartment to go, you know, resolve whatever the situation is, um, we see Miguel sitting outside his door and, uh, Miguel, you know, he wants to train. He tries to talk to Johnny about it and, you know, but his mom, she's not going to allow it anymore. Um, but you know, he tells Johnny, he's like, I've got an idea, you know, and Johnny, you know, he shoots him down pretty quick. You know, there's no more dojo kid. It's over. But what about me? Uh, you know, Miguel wants this. Honestly, Miguel needs this. Uh, training with Johnny has allowed him to make some, you know, pretty, uh, remarkable changes in his life. Um, uh, but we see how this is all affecting Johnny. He loves that he brought a uh, Cobra Kai back. He loves that he has a student that has taken it, uh, you know, the way of the fist seriously. Um, but now his son is acting out and this is pulling him away from, um, what he is passionate about. This is something that is, uh, you know, it brings more negativity to a person that is already prone to negativity. He is definitely prone to negativity too. Um, so, you know, we see Johnny is not happy at all. You know, he does what a, a father should do. And uh, he goes and finds his son. And he finds him. And <laughs> what a scene this is. Well, it starts off with um, a pretty inappropriate scene. Very inappropriate scene. <laughs> Robbie and his loser friend smoking dope and watching porn. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Johnny busts in, and or it seems like he did. And he said... He was knocking for like five minutes. I think yeah. That's what he said. Um, I guess they couldn't hear him over the trash, you know, from their uh, boom box. Yeah. <laughs> he comes in with the boom box, you know, and these kids are like, what the heck's a boom box? And he's like, what's that on your face? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's like he's still What's talks. that thing on your lip? <laughs> what's that thing on your lip? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, the center change, you know, it's just great, you know. Um, the funny thing is these kids just had no clue what a boom box was and <laughs> he throws a, you know, very eighties style insult in his face. Mm -hmm. well, I mean, it is a pretty lame attempt at uh, growing a mustache. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's pretty lame. It was, uh, but what's important, you know, that we are finally seeing, uh, Johnny and Robbie face to face, uh, and Robbie is a bit of a dick to his dad. He really is. Um, you know, we can see that, uh, Robbie, he's an angry kid. Um, he's really holding, you know, a lot of resentment towards his dad. Um, you know, so after, you know, they go back and forth, you know, you know, you know, Johnny and Robbie and Johnny with, you know, Robbie's friends, you know, Robbie really gives him an earful. Yeah. He tells him that he doesn't, um, you know, what a real father, uh, son trip is like. So he just made one up. Uh, it's obvious that Robbie has a lot of things, you know, he wants to say to his dad. Um, he has a lot to get off his chest and he, he's, you know, he really, uh, struck a blow when he made fun of him for uh, having his own strip mall karate dojo. Yeah. He really lets Johnny have it there. You can see it on Johnny's face. You know, it's affecting him. Mm -hmm. Uh, he's speechless. You know, this is his son, you know, he's such a disrespectful little shit, you know, and, uh, this is where we, you know, we really start to understand some things. You know, Johnny is obviously not actively involved in Robbie's life. Um, that's, a, that's about all we can, you know, really assume from this scene. But it's interesting that, uh, Johnny asked Robbie, you know, where's your mom? Of course she's not around. It's, it's three o'clock. You know, it, it has to be happy hour somewhere. Uh, so, you know, maybe Robbie's mom isn't the best, um, parental figure either oh robbie got pissed about that didn't he they did um yeah that struck a struck a chord with him mm -hmm. he jumped right up and looked looked like he was ready to throw hands yeah um it's a bit of an emotional scene though i, I think things could have gone you know they could have gone so differently uh what do you think i i i definitely think so um i mean we still don't know everything about them um but johnny you know he should have asked his son to step outside and talk with him you know, they, they both have 
you know, big chips on their shoulders. You know, this is definitely Johnny's kid. You know, you can see the attitude there, right? Um, I just think Johnny could have, you know, corrected this situation, you know, much differently. Um, get him away from, you know, those kids. Um, take him outside, you know, try to talk to him man to man, I guess. Um, you know, tell the kids you're sorry, you know, try to make amends. Um, you know, this isn't, it isn't Robbie's fault, you know. Um, this is where the art of communication would have been so beneficial. You know, I'm, I'm sure this is a rough or a tough situation to be in. Maybe both, right? Yeah. You know? Um, I'm sure Johnny's overrun with guilt and I'm sure that Robbie is overrun with uh, anger, but just talk it out. Apologize, Johnny. Well, Johnny doesn't. Maybe Johnny doesn't even know what to say, but he did show up at Robbie's apartment to try and convince him to, you know, stay in school. So I think he's taken a step in the right direction until Robbie tells him that uh, he's not going back. His mom is okay with it and get the, get the fuck out. (laughs) (laughs) And Johnny leaves, you know, a bit dismayed, but he, he leaves, you know, he feels like he's, he's lost this battle And, and maybe this battle isn't even worth fighting over, you know? Isn't it funny how hard Johnny is? He's trying to correct his own mistakes. He really is. Um, but he's made a lot of mistakes. He has. And every time he starts, you know, moving forward, he just, it just seems like he keeps getting dragged back. Well, I think we're going to see a, a lot of that, a whole lot of that with him. Like there's so many situations that we've seen already where he could have just, you know, communicated and these problems would have been resolved. And how many people, you know, are, are facing this now? I mean, I've faced it. I know you faced it. Yeah, it's you know? pride. Could be everybody, you know? <laughs> it could be. And it, it is, really. I mean, we all have our own battles. And uh, this is Johnny's battle. Yeah. So Daniel has uh, sent two of his guys off to uh, paint over the dick on his billboard. <laughs> Can the next 90 seconds change your life? I'm going to show you a three-step method used by millionaires, Fortune 500 executives, and everyday people who have generated more success than you can possibly imagine. They followed this three-step elevated success method to fulfill their untapped potential to accelerate their careers and improve their overall life satisfaction and happiness. And manifest the life beyond their wildest dreams. Visit us at the Jericho Experiment and I'll show you how you can get started today. And even Amanda said that um, that was a good idea, you know. Finally, she agrees yeah, with him, right? Yeah, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but Daniel's main concern isn't really over the dick painted in his mouth. It's more, you know, he's more concerned over his relationship with his daughter. Um, she's really upset with him for embarrassing her at that Halloween dance. Well, Samantha's in school, um, but the focal point isn't on her. You know, it's on her friend. Well, her, her old friend, Aisha, mm-hmm. you know, and we all know what happened to her, you know, at the dance. You know, Yasmin made a video of her eating at the buffet table. She put a pig nose on her face and sent it out to the whole school. It's, you know, oinking and stuff. Attack the, you know, watch out the attack on the buffet. You know, Aisha is so embarrassed. Um, she's humi- humiliated, you know, and every kid passing her is oinking at her and saying, here, piggy, piggy, here, piggy, piggy. I mean, high school kids are mean, you know. They are, and it's pretty accurate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It is. Uh, we all know how mean uh, some people are, but this is just uncalled for. Aisha didn't, uh, you know, she didn't do anything to this girl. She didn't do anything. Or anyone else. She, nothing at all, you mm-hmm. know. Uh, why in the world do these kids, you know, they think it's okay to treat someone this way? Well, they don't have any other reason than hate. I mean, 
this is no way to treat another human. We all have to remember, you know, we should never have to put up with this. But the people that do these things, you know, have their own issues. They're just trying to cover up their own problems or make themselves feel better by making someone else feel even worse. I agree. Um, you know, Samantha, she approaches her and, you know, she tries to make her feel better. You know, she can, she obviously feels bad about this. You know, she tells her that, you know, they're all mean, but they have short memories, you know, like they're going to forget about you and just, just ride the wave, you know? Um, but for Aisha, she'll never forget the way she's being treated. You mm-hmm. know, unfortunately, you know, we see kids, you know, especially, you know, do terrible things because of the way they get treated. Um, this can lead to lifelong problems, you know, even worse. Absolutely. Uh, you do have to be strong. You know, you do need to stand up for yourself, but it's re- it is really hard. Uh, it is such a, a miserable state to be in, uh, being laughed at, being ridiculed. It's just not right. You know, here at the Jericho Experiment, we want to help people in these situations. We don't like this crap. No one does. Um, but we want to do something about it. And maybe Cobra Kai does too. And then Sam falls right back into the, the arms of one of the worst kids in school, Kyler. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and they're talking about going to see a movie after school, you know, and, and look what, you know, <laughs> the kid that I love, fatty fat stick is doing behind her. <laughs> the inappropriate, you know, hand motions. I mean, I'm not going to say it, you know, but <laughs> it's easy to see, <laughs> you know. So it's apparent that Kyler has plans that, uh, don't involve watching a movie with her. And, um, we see Daniel, you know, she's holding her phone away from her and Daniel's texting Sam like crazy. He wants to talk to her, you know, but she just doesn't have anything to say to him. She's still just so upset about the Halloween dance. Um, you know, we can see that Daniel is really struggling now. Every aspect of his life just seems to be collapsing. And then Daniel gets the message about, the lunch he ordered for everyone <laughs> sausages sausages from his friend Tom Cole. <laughs> oh boy. He is not happy about this. Uh, and there's even a uh, special delivery instruction, you know, he prefers his sausage long and thick. <laughs> That's so dirty. <laughs> long, long and thick. Oh man. Uh, this is obviously a reference to the billboard. Uh, was Tom, you know, was Tom Cole responsible for this? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, Daniel was starting to think so, but Amanda shrugs it off. She even tries to look at the perspective or at the positive side of this. What positive side? Hey, free lunch. Hey, free lunch. <laughs> like she's so good at that, you know, yeah. about turning in every situation around. Uh, but Daniel, he's not having this. He wants to see the billboard. <laughs> He has Louis and Anoush, you know, Anoush. He's such mm-hmm. a funny character, too. Uh, but they're up there painting over it. Um, he calls them up and, let me see it. I want to see it. You know, <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> these two guys started on the sides yeah, instead there. of the middle. <laughs> <laughs> so they still see it. Like, he wants that thing removed as quickly as possible. Um, but something interesting happens. Um, Anoush tells Louis that he just stepped in talk shit. <laughs> And Louie, you know, of all people, responds pretty rationally. How how would a dog even get up here? <laughs> so, <laughs> how would a dog get up there? <laughs> we know who was up there, man. Yeah. It was Johnny. <laughs> Did, and, you know, they found the, the flyer. Did Johnny actually take a shit when he was up there painting a dick on Daniel's face? <laughs> oh, my God. You know, he did. <laughs> Yeah, it's so messed up. Johnny took a shit up there. That is disgusting, Johnny. God. What in the world is wrong with the guy? Oh, I love that guy. My God. That does seem, you know, like something drunken Johnny would do, though. What is up with this guy and him <laughs> taking shits in places he isn't supposed to? It's really gross, but it's really funny, though. Yeah. <laughs> It's, where in the world did they come up with this, man? <laughs> you, you know, it's it's happened. It must have happened. Uh, so now we're uh, we're back at the school with Miguel, Dimitri, and Eli. 
And old Dimitri is telling Miguel that it's, you know, it's probably for the best, right? That you don't take karate anymore. <laughs> he's, oh. he's got his reasons for everything. And um, he even says that it was starting to build your confidence. <laughs> that's a bad thing. <laughs> like, that's a bad thing. It's going to get you in trouble. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. You know, having self-confidence is a great thing. We all have the ability to do whatever, you know, anything we want. The only person that uh, truly has the power to hold you back is yourself. Self-confidence is everything. And this is where we we hear Eli really start to talk for the first, you know, the first time. And he tells Miguel that it was pretty cool that, uh, you know, the way he stood up to Kyler. And that's cool. Uh, someone sees how much of an impact, you know, having confidence can uh, have on someone else's life. That's that's cool. Yeah, it is cool. But Dimitri he swoops right in and explains, you know, to both of them that confidence has never gotten anybody anywhere. <laughs> Just a black eye in their backpack thrown in the garbage. Um, but Miguel, you know, he's not buying it, you know. Good for you, Miguel, man. You know, don't listen to him. And all of you out there listening to this, you know, don't listen to that negative en- energy. You know, let just let it go. They can say what they want. You just ignore it. And uh, Dimitri asks them both, you know, what is the best superpower? And Miguel says super strength, which I think is pretty good. Yeah. Um, but Dimitri uh, quickly corrects him and says that uh, super speed is the best <laughs> to quickly run away. <laughs> The Flash. <laughs> the Flash. Let me get out of here. Um, a close second would be invisibility, you know, to hide, you know, run away or hide. You know, that's kind of his perspective. Um, so, Jericho, if you had to pick, you know, what do you think uh, is the best superpower? What do you think it would be? Um, probably intelligence. All right. That's cool. Super intelligence. Absolutely. I mean, because yeah. you, that way you're going to be able to think your problems through the way you should. Yeah. For me. For you. I got it. That's cool. Uh, you know, well, super speed and, and invisibility would be pretty cool. Um, but not for the reasons uh, Dimitri suggested. Um, there's no reason to run away from your problems. Uh, no matter how fast you are, you're not going to get away from them, just to say. Uh, and there's definitely no reason to hide yourself. Uh, be strong. Face your problems. H- head, you know, head on and conquer them. Don't hide yourself from anyone. Be proud of who you are. You're, you were a beautiful creation here to shine your light for everyone to see. Uh, you should never deny yourself or the world the opportunity to see how bright your light actually shines. And just then, right on cue, our favorite characters show up. Kyler and the, the fat, cool dude. <laughs> and Kyler, he's, he's being a real asshole now. You know, he's, he's pushing the limits. He grabs Eli by the face, makes fun of his deformity, and, and just continues to put him down. And, uh, you know, Miguel, he's, he's still not going to back down though. You know, he tells him, you know, back off and they shove Miguel, you know, pretty quick, you know, push him away. And, um, we can see that even though he, you know, he wants to stand, stand up for his friends, you know, he's, man, he's a bit demoralized and Kyler, you know, he can sense it, you know, he snatches Dimitri's backpack and he throws it into the trash can right where Dimitri just threw away his yogurt. But guess what? Someone overheard Kyler bullying them. Samantha. Mm-mm. She seems shocked. She really likes this kid, but he's a real asshole. And did we just witness Samantha realize that her dad was right about the kid all along? Oh no. I am sure this isn't a uh, you know going to sit well you know too well with Samantha. Definitely not. You know, uh, she certainly doesn't want to admit to her dad that he was right. You know, no mm-hmm. teenager does. Um, and they go on their date and. You can see, you know, right from the start, she is not happy with Kyler. Um, man, I, I know this because I've seen that look on a girl's face before. <laughs> and, you know, like you just know she's locked in and she's ready to explode with fury, you know. But but Kyler, like he just, he doesn't care. Right. You know, he's just sitting there. He's not even really watching the movie. You know, he's slurping on his drink like, like a complete asshole, you know, and... And then he just starts feeling Sam up. And Sam, she's had enough. Uh, she knows he's lying about the incident with uh, Miguel, Dimitri, and Eli. Uh, that clown even tried to say that uh, he was just playing around. And, you know, they're all friends. Yeah, we're all friends. We're all friends. We just yeah. do this all the time. Sure. Uh, but, uh, you know, she was there. She heard how it all went down. He's lying to her and she knows it. So when he refuses to stop, 
you know, when she tells him to, she pulls off some quick karate moves and backs him off. Yeah, all dads out there, you know, with a daughter. Put her in karate lessons. <laughs> this could have uh, been a bad situation for Sam. I mean, she really she really smacked him around, though, you know. And mm-hmm. she tries to get back up. And and Kyler, you know, he, he tries to stop her. He grabs her, you know. But she sits his ass right back down with, with three quick punches. It could have been bad for her. Uh, Kyler's a strong kid, and he isn't nice. And he's really aggressive, too, you know. That's right. Uh, yeah. Uh, you know, she's lucky. Uh, she had the training and, and the confidence to handle him. You know, it is funny because in a previous uh, scene, she tells Daniel not to worry because she can handle herself. This girl is uh, Jersey tough. Jersey tough. <laughs> yeah. And now we are back, you know, at uh, LaRusso Auto where Amanda is meeting with some uh, marketing agents to update their advertising. And, uh, you know, she's, she's briefing them, uh, you know, in a little bit, you know, you know, please don't mention the billboard, you know, before Daniel comes in, please don't mention the billboard, you know, um, Daniel's quite sensitive to it. And just then Daniel walks in and, uh, Daniel is, uh, you know, he's nowhere near the cool, calm and collected guy that, that he's been, you know, so far into this, this season, you know, um, especially after running into Johnny. And, uh, he tells them, you know, you know, Hey, it's been a, been a crazy day. I'm sure you all saw the billboard <laughs> and the marketing, uh, agents, you know, they kind of have that look at each other and with Amanda, like, Oh crap, what do we do now? You know? And they're both just so quick. No, no, no. We, ha- we haven't seen it. We haven't seen it, you know? And <laughs> obviously Daniel, he knows that, uh, Amanda was preparing the, you know, preparing the two agents for this. Mm-hmm. So this is where Daniel uh, starts to talk about using karate and the bonsai trees in his advertising. Uh, the agent thought it was uh, just a funny gimmick. And I think Daniel was taken back, you know, by that a little. Uh, these things aren't gimmicks. They are meaningful to him. And this is important. Um, we should all feel uh, good about the way we express, um, you know, the way we express ourselves. Uh, we all have our own things and they hold a strong meaning to us. And I like how Amanda put, um, you know, back in the day, karate in the Valley was like football in Texas and Daniel was the champ. Yeah. I mean, it was a, it was a huge part of his life. Um, and now that, you know, to try to compare, you know, what he does with Tom Cole, they're going to show, you know, them Tom Cole's commercial and they're not supposed to do it. You know, they're not supposed to say anything about it. And, uh, it's just ridiculous. It was ridiculous. You know, and, and while Daniel's actually had meaning, Tom's, his did not. Um, this dude is dressed up like a revolutionary soldier, calling himself the strong American, you know, and is now going to give out a cactus plant, you know, kind of how Daniel gives out the bonsai trees. Except that he states, you know, that a drought resistant cactus plant, you know, they're the only responsible plant. <laughs> <laughs> like a slap right in Daniel's yeah. face. Daniel, he's just had enough. He can't take it anymore. He gets up and walks out. Uh, but where is he going? Well, we find out that he's headed to see Tom Cole at uh, Cole's on Van Eyes. And it's, you know, a strong encounter. Uh, Daniel walks right in and he tells a, a customer that she better uh, watch out. This dealer likes to put all kinds of hidden fees, mm-hmm. put in all kinds of hidden fees, rather. Uh, I mean, he's coming in strong. And this Tom Cole, he's a real jerk. He keeps offering Daniel a... Uh, a boba tea. A boba tea. I've never even heard of a boba tea. I think this guy just likes saying boba. Let me get you a boba. Have a boba. Mm-hmm. What the heck is boba tea? You know, <laughs> I had to look it up after this scene, and it's uh, it's basically a tea with tapioca pearls that uh, you suck up through the straw and chew on. <laughs> Have you ever had one of these? <laughs> no. Uh, I, I mean, I love tea. I love unsweet tea. Uh, I don't know about tapioca at all, and so- I certainly don't think I would like it in my tea. Okay, so the tea has some pearls that you suck on, huh? <laughs> oh, man. <It's... laughs> all right, all right, all right. <laughs> Let's just say it doesn't uh, seem like my kind of thing, all no, right? but whatever. Oh, no. and, and I'm not big on tapioca, so yeah. Tom Cole can have them. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, Daniel wasn't playing around. But I, I don't think it would be in the show if, if nobody liked them. I mean, so you've never tried one? No, I haven't. I've never even heard of it until this. Yeah. Maybe we're in the uh, the wrong uh, bracket. 
I guess we are. Indeed. Uh, you know, so Daniel wasn't playing around, right? Uh, this guy painted a dick on his face. Then he makes a, a commercial that implies uh, Daniel isn't, you know, that he's unpatriotic and implies that um, <laughs> he is a water waster. A water waster. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. They're in California. Yeah. Okay. So Tom explains that um, he's just doing what Daniel is doing. He's not a revolutionary soldier, and Daniel isn't really a karate guy. Well, Daniel really is a karate guy. Two-time champ, in fact. And uh, then Tom starts making fun of Daniel and uh, his karate. What's this? Yeah, right, right. <laughs> but then he says, you know, maybe he uh, let the rivalry get the best of him and offers his um, boba, boba tea again. <laughs> but, you know, when Daniel refuses again, Tom says... You know, you must be uh, full after eating all that dick. Oh, <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> Daniel snaps. He pulls off some kind of uh, spinning reverse kick, you know, and uh, knocks Tom's boba tea right out of his hands. Uh, it goes flying across the dealership. And now, you know, we see Daniel, uh, you know, walking out with a big smile on his face. Um, he's, he's feeling good about what he just did. You know, maybe his confidence is coming back, you know. He feels like he's starting to take control of all of this negative, you know, situations that he's in right now. Um, but how do you think his wife will react when she finds out? I'm sure she is not going to be happy about this. She, uh, she doesn't seem like the type that would, uh, promote this kind of behavior. Um, but now, you know, now we see a lady and, uh, you know, some guy talking in a bar, um, talking about internal and external audits. And uh, this lady's uh, sucking down some drinks while the guy's just blabbing on and on and on, you know. And uh, let me tell you, you know, I've taken some accounting classes in school and uh, they are uh, it's just as boring, you know, as that guy talking about. <laughs> it's not my thing. Never was. And uh, and then all of a sudden Johnny walks up and uh, we can see that uh, this lady is, in, you know, in no way pleased to see him. And that's because she's Robbie's mom. So this is Johnny's ex, you know. Um, and Johnny wants to, uh, he put, he wants to put an end to this whole Robbie dropping out of school thing. Um, but there's, there's a lot of animosity between these two. Like you could just, you could just feel it, you know, uh, just kind of through their actions, you know, and, um, instead of talking about the situation, um, you know, she only wants to belittle him about the past. And I love when her date walks back up, you know, he wants to pull her away from Johnny to continue their date. But Johnny says, word of advice. She won't go down on you unless you buy her dessert. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> and it's funny how he just, he's like, okay, okay. Thanks for the tip, bro. <laughs> you know? Um, but this is a, this is a very important scene. Uh, Johnny's ex is, you know, really putting him down, you know, about not ever being there for, uh, their son. Mm -hmm. Uh, she's letting him have it, you know, and, and we kind of need to, to see, you know, to, to hear these things. Uh, so we kind of get a better understanding, you know, of, of, you know, how, or why things are the way they are, you know? And, um, yeah, she's just really giving it to him. And, um, and he suggests to her, you know, let Robbie come live with me, you know, I'll make him go to school, you know? And, and I believe Johnny would, I do. Uh, maybe he hasn't been there before, but, uh, you know, it, sometimes it's just so hard, you know, and for somebody like him, it was just maybe something he couldn't deal with, you know, mm -hmm. You know, but if you're finding yourself in this situation, f don't don't give up, you know, find a way to fix it, you know, because there is a way to fix it. It may take some time and, you know, some wounds, they may never heal, you know, but I promise there is a way to make it work. And sometimes all it takes is just communicating with each other. So we learn a little bit about Johnny here. Um, he def he defends himself by saying that at least, you know, he hasn't given up on his son, but she tells him to eat shit. You know, he gave up on day one. So now we know that Johnny hasn't been involved very much, if at all. Um, but Robbie's mom, you know, she's she isn't in the be, you know best place either. We heard references about her liking to uh, drink, and now we see her in action. And we see that uh, her and the bartender are on a first-name basis. So Johnny leaves. I'm not sure he's feeling very good at all. You know, we see Johnny uh, eating dinner alone at a diner, and he just looks so dejected. And he spots a father and son, you know, sharing some ice cream together, you know, like one of those big uh, malt shakes from a diner mm -hmm. with the whipped cream piled up on top. And, um, 
you know, they're acting like they're, they're having a sword fight, you know, with spoons. And it's, it's just a sweet moment, you know, and, and Johnny, he doesn't have that, you know, he never had that, you know, as a kid or as a father. Um, but I promise you, you know, if you're in this situation, you can fix it, you know, just drop your pride, bro. You know, it's, it's all about your kid, you know, don't let fear or your ego keep you away. You know, sometimes you just have to, you know, you just have to bite your lip. Just let it go. You know, put on a smile, you know, do the best you can do. You know, if, if, if that's all you can do is the best you can do, it's going to be enough and you'll, you'll be happy that you did it. And Johnny does just this. He's standing there in the doorway and he's letting it all out. Uh, he's sorry he messed up. You know, I know you said it's too late, but please just give me another shot. You know, it's all very heart wrenching stuff. He even says this kid, you know, is the only person that's never given up on me. Wait, what? Now we see he's not talking to Robbie's mom. He's talking to Miguel's mom. Yeah, but he he could have really said those same things, you know, to Robbie's mom, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he should have. But he's talking to Carmen and he's trying to convince her to allow Miguel to train again. She was upset about what happened to Miguel, you know, but Miguel is, you know, isn't in a good place. And I think she's starting to see, you know, how much training with Johnny has helped him. And now he doesn't have that, you know, because she took it away. So do you think he'll uh, get to start training with Cobra Kai again? Well, Johnny has promised not to fail him again. So maybe, um, but I don't, I don't think Johnny ever failed him. You know, he, he can't be with him every single second, you know, and he's been training the heck out of Miguel. You know, he just needs more time. Sometimes it just takes time, you know, I mean, Miguel, you know, he had the confidence to strike first. He did it, you know, he took that lesson and he implemented it, you know, so he's, he took the first lesson to heart, you know, maybe now he's ready for the next, you know, don't, don't beat yourself up, Johnny. All right. So we've seen a lot happen in this episode and now we're back at uh, the LaRusso house and it's morning. Um, we know this is Daniel's time and he likes making a big breakfast, espressos and music, but not today. No music, no espresso, and he has a dry English muffin for his son's breakfast. <laughs> and that kid says, what is this, Afghanistan? <laughs> this kid is a mess. Yeah, he is just a mess. Um, but it's all gloom and doom, right? And uh, Amanda, you know, she thinks it's all because of Tom Cole, but but it's not. Not at all. You know, Daniel, he tells her, you know, I fix that. Uh, he just really wishes he could fix the situation with Sam. And, uh, Sam walks in and Daniel and Amanda are, they're, they're both shocked. You know, Sam, you know, finally looks to be in a, a pleasant mood. And she asks, you know, where are the banana rama pancakes? And, and this is it now, you know, Daniel, he's in, you know, he starts whipping some up for, you know, anything for his little girl. Right. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, if she wants to ask, he asks her, you know, do you want to invite Kyler over for the weekend? And, and she tells him, you know, Kyler, you know, he's not going to be around anymore. And she was even smiling about it. So that was, that was kind of nice that she realized that, you know, what kind of person he was. And, um, but Daniel and Amanda, they're, they're both in shock once again. I mean, both of them, you know, they drop their jaws. It's pretty funny. It is. They kind of have a look with each other like, what, what happened? You know, but, but Sam, she's obviously okay with it. Uh, she even laughs about it a little, you know, but this kid, Kyler, he, he is bad news, you know, so it, it might not be over yet. Not for Sam. And now we see Johnny back in uh, the dojo popping off the top of a beer when uh, Miguel walks in. And Miguel tells Johnny that uh, his mom said uh, he can start training again. <laughs> Johnny, it worked. You did it, man. You did it, bro. <laughs> uh, but uh, Johnny tells him, you know, are you ready to move on to the next level? <laughs> oh, holy crap. <laughs> it's getting intense now. Are you ready to move on to the next level? Uh, he tells Miguel that, you know, you just got your ass kicked because you didn't have any defense, right? And what he's going to teach him is the best defense he can know, more offense. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> so Johnny's feeling good, Miguel is feeling good, Sam is feeling good, and Daniel is feeling really good. We can hear it in the music playing as uh, he's driving to work. Uh, he's moving, he's grooving, you know. He took uh, care of Tom Cole, and he's giving Cole's billboard the finger as he passes by. Uh, Daniel and Sam are, are good again, and his billboard is fixed. Life is good. Hey, great job on the billboard, guys. 
But the mood at the dealership isn't good. Uh, Louis and Anoush, you know, have something to show them. They found the Cobra Kai flyers at the billboard. Johnny was up there. He's the one that painted the dick on Daniel's face. Yep. And we already knew that, you know, didn't we? Mm -hmm. Uh, But now Daniel does too. Uh, But I wonder if Anoush realizes that uh, Johnny took a dump up there (laughs) and he just stepped in it. (laughs) (laughs) Thanks for listening, guys. Uh, Be sure to check out JerichoExperiment.com and we'll be back with episode five very soon. Experience new vibes at Aurora's Vibes.com. Aurora's Vibes. What's your vibe?